Chapter 23 The Wood Pile The brigade arrived in Lachine on a quiet August evening. Once the pelts were delivered to the company warehouse, Pierre shouldered his pack and headed for home. Just before he turned onto the road that led to his cabin, he approached Dr. Gilliard's house. Pierre closed his eyes and shivered as he recalled the mad dash he'd made the last spring. LePage! Pierre LePage! Gerard called out. Pierre looked up, surprised to see the doctor, his wife, and Celeste all sitting on the front porch. Good evening, doctor, Pierre said, touching his cap. Is McCade's brigade back already? Gilliard, Gilliard asked. We just got in this evening, sir, Pierre paused at Gilliard's front gate. Did you have a good trip? The doctor asked. Yes. Pierre paused, thinking about how impossible it would be to reduce the last three months of his life to a single answer. For now, he would leave it simple. Yes. He repeated, we had a fine trip. You must stop by sometime, Mrs. Gilliard inter interjected, and tell us about your travels. I'd like that, Pierre said, smiling at Celeste. Hello, Celeste, he said. Celeste blushed and lowered her eyes before she spoke. He remembered her as bold and self-confident, yet today she looked pale and shy. Since Celeste's reply was impossible to hear, Pierre simply smiled. Nice seeing you folks, he said, but I really have to get home. Of course, Dr. Gilliard said, but do stop by again. Thank you, sir, I will. Pierre heard the axe from a long way off. Even before he got within sight of the cabin, the ringing of the steel told him his father was splitting oak. As he walked up the trail, he recalled the day last spring when he had sprinted down the same path. He balked at the thought that it had happened just last May. He shook his head and wondered how time could play such tricks. It seemed as if half his life had passed since that day. Just then, he heard a bark, and his dog Pepper ran out of the brush. Pierre knelt and greeted his old friend. The whole time he petted the dog, he could still hear the steady ringing of Father's axe. At the edge of the clearing, Pierre laid down his pack. His moccasins were silent as he and Pepper crept towards the cabin to surprise his father. They were screened by a tall pine until they were near, nearly to the woodshed, but as soon as Pierre tiptoed around the corner of the cabin, his father looked up. Reacting to some small movement or sensing his presence out of instinct, as woodsmen often do, Father looked over his shoulder. The axe was suspended high over his head. In a single motion, he released the blade and pivoted towards his son. Pierre sucked in his breath and closed his eyes tight. He could see the axe slashing into his father's leg. Instead, he heard the solid thunk of wood, and he looked up again. By then, Father was halfway to him. Before Father had a chance to shout, Pierre put his finger to his lips and shook his head, signaling to keep his arrival a, a secret. Teary-eyed, Father crushed him in a long, silent hug. "'Let me have a look at you,' Father whispered, stepping back to hold him at arm's length. As they stood eye to eye, Pierre was surprised to see he was nearly as tall as his father. They shook hands, and Father raised his eyebrows when he felt the new strength in Be Pierre's grip. He grinned like a man who had found a son long given up for dead. Pierre was worried, though, by the strange way his father shook his head from side to side. Is something wrong? Pierre asked, but his father just stared. I said, is there something wrong? Father chuckled, saying, not something, but everything. What do you mean? Pierre asked. Is mother all right? No, no, nothing like that. What do you mean, then? Is it not wrong to send a boy off and have him never come back? I'm back. But you're not the same. Father studied the confusion in his son's eyes. He concluded finally by saying, No, somewhere along the trail you buried my boy and resurrected a man in his place. Father was laughing now and giving his son a second hug. Pierre had trouble believing he'd changed that much, from boy to man. He thought in a single summer? He looked over his shoulder towards the house to see if anyone had heard the commotion. As father stepped back, Pierre couldn't help staring at the stub of his father's thumb stretched tight as it was with skin that looked smoother and shinier than the rest of his hand. Father saw him staring at the injured thumb and suddenly lifted it, lifted it level with his son's eye. You have nothing to worry about where this little stump is concerned, he said. It healed quick and never slowed me down, even half a lick. Feel it, he paused, tapped the stub on Pierre's shoulder. It works just as good as a regular thumb, and it's tough as a chunk of seasoned cordwood. Still grinning, Father thumbed his sacred appendage twice against the front of his own thigh to prove his point. Why don't you take a rest? Pierre asked, nodding in the direction of the woodpile, and let me finish up the splitting. 
Father frowned. This is no time to chop wood. We've got some serious celebrating to do. Once you step inside the house, Pierre said, I suspect it won't take Mother long to figure out the wood isn't splitting itself. Father nodded, then agreeing it would be a fine joke. He studied his son's weathered, tufted face while Pierre walked to the wood block and pulled the axe free with one hand. It felt good to balance the familiar hickory handle in his hands. The dark, oiled grain was smooth against his callous palms. As he hefted the axe, Pierre was surprised that it felt no heavier than a paddle blade. He set a block of wood in place and swung. The flat crack of a branch snapping off in midwinter cold, the blade sheared the oak block in two. The perfect halves fell onto the packed earth with a thud and rocked for an instant before they were still. Pierre smiled when he saw how deeply the axe head was buried in the chopping block. Then, with a grin that bettered his sons, father hurried off towards the cabin.